On April 16, 1991, in Welsh, West Virginia, 17-year-old Donnie Trent and his best friend, Ricky Riggs, left school early with another friend. Usually, whenever we skip school, we would go out back there and swing on the vines. All over the woods, there's big vines that's attached to trees, and all you gotta do is cut loose the bottom of them, and you can swing out on them. Everybody around, it's been going on around here for a long time. It was always kind of a prank, you know, for all of us to be swinging on there, and somebody say, boy, that's high. That's awful high. If, some, if that vine had to break or somebody fell off that, they said there's no way they would live through it. When Steve got back, Donnie grabbed the vine. And he swung out, and it got to its highest point where it would stop and then start coming back. I really didn't know whether he was going to be dead or not. I just knew I had to get down there. Donnie! Donnie! We're here, Donnie. Get help! Get help! All right, we never stay. We're right back. We're right back. I looked at Donnie, and he was moving somewhat. We didn't realize at first how bad he was hurt until we seen the bone sticking out of the bottom of his ankles. And I took my shirt off and wrapped it around his hand and told him to squeeze onto it and hold it. Careful, careful. I was scared to move him, scared that uh, his back was probably hurt or his neck could be hurt, anything. But we were so far back in the woods, all I could think about doing was keeping him calm until uh, help got there. We're getting somebody for you right now. He was bleeding pretty bad through his ankles. Then his head started to swell, where it hit his head on the rock, and the side of his face was starting to turn blue. And we realized by then that if we didn't get help a lot faster than what was coming, that uh, he would die. And Steve started running up the mountain to go see if he could get him to hurry up any faster. Just don't worry about He kept telling me how tired he was and sleepy, but I was afraid to let him close his eyes because I'd heard that anyone that fell asleep and had a bad in head injury might not wake up. Stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. Come on. Stay awake. Stay awake. I was there along with him for a long time. It's one of the worst feelings I've ever felt. You just feel completely useless. I couldn't do nothing until help got there. Stay awake now. Talk to me. Yeah. He's down here. He's down here. Come on. He's hurt bad. What happened? Come on. Come on. Come Come here. Here. Hurry up. It was quite a distance from the school. We had to run down the road and uh, down over the hillside to where the accident occurred. Athletic trainer Ed Evans tried to assess the youth's condition. You know who I am? Hey, give me the bag, give me the bag. Do you know who I am? His feet were so mangled, only a small portion of the Achilles tendon and some muscle about an inch or so was all that was holding his feet on. He had bled so much his blood pressure was almost nil. Can't get anything. I could see the blood vessels in his legs. I just pinched down on him with my thumb and my four fingers, and he was so empty, it slowed the blood flow down. Okay. Okay, good. I'm not a paramedic. I am a first aider. I treated on the football field many, many injuries, but nothing that said to me, this kid could die in front of you. Else or I did test to see if he had any spinal cord damage, but risking being paralyzed maybe from the waist down versus bleeding to death was a choice that had to be made. Okay, good. We're gonna get you out of here. The right here. ready? We very quickly lifted him onto that backboard and we went. On three. One, two, three. Okay, let's go. Get out of here. Let's go. It was extremely steep and very difficult for us to walk up. We had to hold on to trees and small saplings, whatever we could grab, to pull ourselves up the hill. Oh, 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 Watch your step, guys. 
Were they with us, Donnie? From him? Donnie was screamed and hollered all the way up that mountain. Rescue units with McDowell County Ambulance Authority arrived within a half hour of Donnie's accident. We met them about halfway between the fall site and the school. I was tremendously relieved to see the paramedics. Battalion Chief Douglas Klein took charge at the scene. I was really surprised that they did have him on a backboard. I went ahead and grabbed his head to hold his neck okay. still. McDowell Control, Medic 16 on scene, Tom Alert 1, Scramble Health Net. He was in very critical condition, and things were starting to become a little fuzzy to him. Okay, okay guys, we've got a large fall here, compound fractures. Let's get the mask on, C-spine first. He's got bleeding, direct pressure with uh, pressure points. We put on an anti-shock trouser suit to help control the bleeding. The fractures were the worst that I've ever seen in 11 years of service. It frightened me that with the wrong move or the wrong touch, we could actually pull his foot off of his leg. Okay, shoe coming off. Really easy, shoe really easy, really easy. Shoe all the way. Okay, guys, we about ready to get him out of here so we can get him strapped down, okay? We were fighting against time because we were a mile or so back into the woods. Hey, Donnie, how you doing, man? It was a long, slow process because we had to keep from moving the patient around as much as possible. A health net helicopter landed at the high school and waited for them. Donnie's father, Raymond Trent, had been notified that his son had been in an accident. I figured it was the broken leg or something, but I saw the paramedics. They were just covered with blood. I knew it was bad then when I saw them. Okay, you're gonna be out there going to talk to them. All right, drop the cot on three. One, two, three. I went around and got in the front door, sat down beside of him. And at that point was when I really seen the condition that Donnie was in. I didn't see how he was even alive at that point. Every time it hit a little bump in the ambulance, he'd holler, oh God, oh God, it hurts. I told him I was there. I said, honey, daddy's here. Reached down, kissed him. He told me, he said, Dad, if I don't make it, he said, I love you. He said, you tell them all that I love you. Tore the inside of me out. That's the hardest thing I ever went through in my life. All I could think of was Donnie and what I was going to tell his mother. All I could think of was tell her the truth, you know, prepare her. And I said, no way will he die. I said, it just can't happen. And my husband would say, but honey, you didn't see him. Honey, you didn't see him. Donnie was airlifted to the trauma unit at Charleston Area Medical Center, 70 miles away, where he was examined by orthopedic surgeon Michael Fittler. We'll try not to hurt you anymore, okay? The broken bones were lying open in the air, and there was a lot of dirt and debris ground into these injured bones. We're going to have to check that head out. It looks like you might have something going on there. He had suffered a head injury that caused actually a small blood clot on the brain. Surgery for Donnie had its increased risks because of his head injury. But this was a risk that had to be taken because there was no doubt that he would lose both of his feet, certainly, if we did not proceed with haste. It took Donnie's parents two and a half hours to drive to the hospital. Hi, I'm Dr. Fiddler. I'm the Dr. Fiddler said he's still alive. He told us that if Donnie lives, he said, I want him to be able to walk. But if I'm going to save his feet, he says, I've got to do it now. He says, I can't wait one minute. I simply had to tell them that we would do the best we could, but that the outcome was certainly uncertain. It's a little unsure how things are going to go tonight, right this minute. I had to see my son. I felt like I had 
to see him because as bad as they had told me that he was, he might not make it through surgery. And one more time, I wanted to put my arms around him and I wanted to tell him how much that I loved him. But they had already moved him and I did not get to see my son before he went into the operating room. Since the accident, Donnie Trent has almost completely recovered. Today, to look at my son and see him walk down the road, it is a miracle. He's doing things that I never a year ago thought that he would ever be able to do. And you know, it's the happiest thing in my life and my wife's life because we absolutely thought he was going to die. <laughs> well, I'm lucky that I can live through it, being that far a fall. The paramedics are responsible, and the trauma unit, and Mr. Evans. I thank them. I, I mean, they saved my life, you know. That's a lot. Knowing he's alive and okay makes me feel great. I know it keeps me away from swinging on grapevines or anything stupid. Ricky called me down the most, you know, he'd sit there and he'd He'd talk to me. He's a good fella. All I can say is we were friends. Friends down around here stick together. Especially in an instant like that. Ah, you get out of here.